Okay, so our final speaker for the afternoon is uh, Dr. Yan Guan Wu, uh, who is a visiting associate scientist at the CHR. So welcome to the podium. Uh, he will be giving a presentation entitled Premature Luteinization of Follicles and Indication for Individualization of Timing of HCG Administration Based on Ovarian Age. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to stand here, introduce you uh, one of CHR's most important studies. It's about premature luteinization of follicles and uh, indication for individualization of timing HCG administration based on ovarian age. Uh, <clears throat> the purpose of this study is to uh, uh, trying to understand the mechanism of uh, age-related low ovarian reserve and low successful rate. Uh, successful rate. And by doing so, we hope to uh, figure out how could reduce the negative impact on uh, this negative impact on IVF outcome for the older uh, patient. <clears throat> Uh, firstly, I would like to introduce briefly the background knowledge about maternal aging and uh, the challenges right now we have in current IVF uh, practice. Uh, as reported by research and uh, clinical publication, maternal aging leads to many reproductive abnormalities including declines in oocyte quality and quantity, uh, very poor embryo development, decreased uh, implantation and pregnancy rate, uh, of course increased uh, miscarriage rate. And this is the data from SART between 2010 and 2012. It's showing us the um, pregnancy rate and the labor birth rate um, from different age groups. Uh, we can see here very clearly. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, very clearly, the right one is the pregnancy rate. We can see older group, uh, patient, a, a patient age over the 42 years old, the pregnancy rate is less than 10%, and the birth, uh, labor birth rate is almost nothing. That's 4%. And uh, on the other hand, in the very young group, this pregnancy rate is high at 50%, and the uh, uh, labor birth rate is 40%. So we can see the big, big difference between young and old patients. And this means right now, currently, all of us, most of the centers, we are having a big problem with the patient age and uh, the age-related low IVF outcome. And this figure is also the data from SART between 2010 and 2012. It's showing us the old cycle numbers. And when patient age is older than 42 years old, I call them old cycles. So this is showing the American old cycle number between 2010 and 2012. And we can see here the cycle number, old cycle number increased every year about 20%. Another figure is CHR data. This is also from 2010 to 12. So we have similar increasing speed. But if we see this figure, it's comparing the ratio uh, of old cycle in the total cycle number, we can see the national data is uh, pr probably 4%. And CHR, we have 20% uh, cycle are the old cycle. That means CHR uh, has five times higher than the average number. So actually, this is old data from uh, by 2012. As my as I know, uh, the very recent data, CHR patient population is almost 43 years old. It means half patient, half of our cycles are older, old, old cycles. <clears throat> Big one. Okay, sorry. And this is means 
actually CHR currently is treating more, much more old patients than most of general IVF center. That's why our physician and the research team we are so interested, so interested in the old lady's ovary. And we are trying to figure out how could we develop the new protocol, new method, even new medicine to help this, lady, this patient to get their uh, IVF future better. Um, by before we can achieve that uh, beautiful goal, we have to answer number one question, which is also the most important question. What happened in old patient's ovary? Uh, as everybody knows, follicles are made of three uh, types of cells. Oocyte, oocyte, sickle cell, and the granulosa cells. Of course, oocyte is our target in the practice. Sickle cell function is uh, relatively simple in the follicle uh, development. It produces Antigen, transport antigen to uh, granulosa cell, support granulosa cell to produce estrogen. Uh, as reported by the research model and the clinical model, granulosa cell has been recognized as the most important cells in follicles for a long time. Uh, granulosa cell, uh, granulosa cell form the direct micro environment to support uh, oocyte growth by taking care of uh, energy, like the energy supply and the waste disposal and uh, actually the molecular uh, signal transportation. So any uh, like functional defects in granulosa cell will result in serious uh, infertility. It will affect many, uh, uh, many aspects like the hormone production and oocyte uh, development, including the oocyte growth, maturation, and ovulation, also will affect the pregnancy maintain. Finally, will lead to the uh, infertility. Since granulosa cell ha uh, is play playing such an important role in the follicle uh, development and the fertility, we made a hypothesis based on this function. Age-related reproductive decline is associated with decreasing competence of follicular, uh, follicular granulosa cells. To test this hypothesis, uh, we divided our patient into three different ages groups. Like showing here, group one is uh, young egg donors, the average age probably is uh, uh, around 24 years old. They present uh, fertility healthy young woman. Group two is the middle age infertile patient. Average age, uh, ages are 34 years old. And uh, group three is our main target. They are older infertile patients. Their average age are 44 years old. Uh, after their IVF cycle, we can tell here, the older group, the older group, the, the older group, they have very poor embryo development ability, and also they give us very low clinical pregnancy rate. To answer what happened in this granulosa cell in the follicles, we collected their granulosa cell after retrieval and perform the functional uh, analysis. First experiment, we test uh, marker gene expression, several marker gene expression in granulosa cells after uh, collection from retrieval. And firstly, we tested FS receptor and the RH receptor expression between the groups. These two receptors are the, actually the most famous marker for granulosa cell function, normal function. Here we can see in very old uh, groups, FH, FSH receptor expression is uh, downregulated and RH receptor is upregulated. And the PCR, this is PCR result. 
And then PCR result was completely um, confirmed by Western blot. <coughs> Uh, it has been reported in animal model, in animal granulosa cells. FSH is highly expressed, and the LH uh, receptor is uh, very low expressed. Uh, during the granulosa cell luteinization, this um, expression pattern is changed. FSH will decrease, and LH receptor will increase expression. So this um, process is very similar to our uh, observation between old patient and young patient. So it's very natural for us to link the luteinization to our old patient's granulosa cells. So this result suggested older patient granulosa cell is undergoing earlier or faster luteinization. To confirm that suggestion, we tested other uh, marker genes, the other two famous marker genes. One is CYP19, its famous aromatase. Another one is progesterone receptor. <coughs> aromatase uh, is the enzyme to, uh, to take care of estrogen production in granulosa cell. It will convert androgen to estrogen. So it's only highly expressed in active, healthy granulosa cells. So uh, when the granulosa cell luteinized, the aromatase activity dropped down and they stopped producing any antigen. Um, progesterone receptor is similar, but it's only expressed in luteinized cell, never in the granulosa cells. So here we show in our older patient group, granulosa cells, we have very low aromatase activity. And uh, we have very high progesterone activity. So this result plus the previous result, we can give the conclusion the old, uh, patient, older patient granulosa cell is, going, is undergoing uh, early luteinization. Although our molecular work proved older patient granulosa cell is luteinized, we need another uh, actually model to show more evidence to confirm this result, to see if all the results they match each other. <clears throat> uh, as reported in animal culture, uh, granulosa cell, during in vitro culture, granulosa cell will respond to FSH stimulation by increasing uh, proliferation, inhibiting apoptosis, up-regulating up aromatase, expression and FSH receptor expression. If the cultured cell is luteinized granulosa cell, all this responding won't happen. So this looks a very, per, it's, a, it's a perfect model to test our uh, granulosa function between different age groups. <clears throat> then we perform an experiment um, to see if during culture, different uh, granulosa cell give us different uh, results. Here, the left, one, left, uh, left part is the no treatment granulosa cell. And this part is the uh, FSH stimulated granulosa cell culture. We can see here that from day one to day five on the group one, group two, group three, this is old patient. We can see without FSH treatment, uh, granulosa cell grow relatively slow. It's battling in older patient. Actually, the, num the cell number decreased during culture. So it means most of cells died. After we add FSH to the medium, granulosa cell respond very well in younger patients. In older patients, mm, they are not dying, but they are not responding very well. So the cell number just like nothing changed. So this means FSH can significantly stimulate proliferation in younger groups but not in older groups. Means older patient granulosa cell, they have no responding to FSH treatment. <clears throat> Later on, we also performed the uh, real cell proliferation evaluation by the case. So to see, to confirm that picture result. <clears throat> Here we can see, this is the file uh, cell proliferation. 
young patient, we have actually very good responding to FSH treatment. And older patient, they have, they have responding, but you cannot compare to a young patient, it's still very low. And the other side is the apoptosis test. <coughs> we see uh, during culture, granulosa cell actually <coughs> increase of apoptosis. And the uh, supplementation of FSH could inhibit apoptosis happen. But in older patients, this effect is very weak. So all these results confirmed with picture, and the old patient granulosa cell doesn't respond to FSH very well. <clears throat> After that result, we also tested gene expression in cultured granulosa cells. We also tested FSH and aromatase. The similar uh, results we can see here. In younger patients, uh, FSH stimulate uh, FSH stimulate FSH receptor and aromatase expression. The old patients, they have very poor responding. So these two results also confirm the previous uh, proliferation and apoptosis. By all the results I show above, we could answer the first question. What happened in this old lady's ovary? The answer is the granulosa cells of old women are undergoing early luteinization during FF treatment. And the granulosa cell early luteinization damages their normal cell function, which in turn may affect IVF outcome. Here I use the word may because from the result above, we don't show, we didn't show the direct link between early luteinization and the low IVF outcome. We have luteinization, we have low IVF, we don't have the direct link between them. So by answering second question, we hope we can uh, give more evidence to link these part, uh, two parts together. The second question is, could we improve IVF outcome by avoiding granulosa cell early luteinization? If we can block the luteinization and then IVF in outcome increase, that means, okay, these two things link together. So to achieve this goal, our physician team, they developed a new uh, IVF treatment protocol. It's called early retrieval. The basic idea of early retrieval is pretty simple. Since the follicle um, environment is, not, is no good anymore because of the early luteinization, so if we can get the egg out of this bad the environment, maybe we can save their future. So we use different uh, treatment protocol compared to standard retrieval. The left side is standard retrieval. Uh, it's a very popular protocol, uh, used by every center actually. Give FSA treatment, give monitoring. When the leading follicle reach to 2022, 20, then retrieve the eggs, perform ICSI embryo transfer. And the early retrieval, we have the similar first part. Give FSH, do more monitoring, carefully monitoring. And then when the follicle reach to 16 millimeter, <coughs> we start trigger and get the eggs out. This table is the clinical data for the pilot study about early retrieval. Uh, because we retrieve the oocyte from smaller follicle, we are not surprised to see more immature eggs. But at the same time, we also see decreased attractive cell. That means we uh, rescue some bad air quality. <clears throat> um, by do so, we also increase the good embryo number per cycle. Finally, most important, we uh, improve the pregnancy rate, clinical pregnancy rate, from 9% to 19% in, in, in patients older than 43 years old. After that, we also need to prove um, their granulosa cell luteinization status was inhibited. 
So we tested the granulosa cell gene expression and the four marker genes we used before. Aromatase, we can see here, in early retrieval group, uh, aromatase increased, FSH receptor increased, LH receptor decreased, and the progesterone receptor decreased. Okay, so the previous result we showed early retrieval works for older patients, but the, pro the protocol is still not perfect because we have another two questions need to answer. First one, how early should we go to trigger the old patient? Because the previous result we did trigger um, when the leading follicle reached to 16 millimeter, and we don't know should we go earlier or later, we don't know. And the second question is, does this early retrieval works for younger POA patients? We tested in older patients, it works, but we don't know if it works in younger patients. So to answer these two questions, we perform other clinical trials. <coughs> first the table, we show the, we, answer, we try to answer the first question. Uh, in this table, we show the older patient, the average age is more than 44 years old, and we separate, uh, we divided them into different follicle size group. The very small follicle is, that, that's the trigger uh, leading follicle size, is 13.5 to 15.5 millimeter, very small. And the middle group is eight, 16 to 18, and the uh, bigger group is 18.5 uh, to 20.5. So from here, the bottom, we can see in the middle size group, we have better embryo development and the better um, pregnancy rate. So from this table, we can get the conclusion. The middle uh, leading follicle size is the best trigger size for graduate retrieval in older patients. Next the page is, uh, next uh, table was done in younger patients. Their age is younger uh, than 39 years old. And uh, the, tr the retrieval was done when the leading follicle reached to 16, like we got from the previous table. <coughs> Here we can see, actually we are very surprised with this result because the pregnancy rate by early retrieval increased from 7% to 40%. That's a big jump, actually. So the conclusion of this table is early retrieval significantly improved pregnancy rate uh, in younger POA patients. From all the results above I present, I would like to summarize our uh, data into the final conclusion. Early granulosa cell luteinization leads to the declines of IVF successful rate in older patients. Trigger at smaller leading follicle size can reduce the negative effects of early luteinization on IVF outcome. 16 to 18 millimeter is the best trigger follicle size for early retrieval and early retrieval is also a good option for young POA patients. And that's what I want to say. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>